Hi everybody, Bill Burkhardt here. Thanks for joining me for another video. And if you'd like to learn more about the new tiller I just purchased, join me right now on Today in Iowa. You know, I can't believe it's been five years since I bought my first uh, tiller for my John Deere 1025. This was a five series from Lampride. It had seven flanges and four blades on each flange and weighed 300 pounds and was recommended for a tractor that size. Now that I own a 2038, I've chosen to move up to the Lampride RTR. That stands for Reverse Tine Tiller. This is a 12 series. It's 74 inches wide. It is quick hitch compatible. And don't forget, if you do that, you have to uh, get a longer PTO uh, to accommodate for the distance, for the extra distance. My dealer provided me with that correct shaft. They do make a uh, 42, Lampride makes a 42, a 50, 58, 66, 74, and 82 inch tiller. The drive chain is uh, housed behind this cover and is enclosed in an oil bath type design. To check the oil level, you just remove that lower bolt there. And with the tiller level, the oil should be at the bottom of the hole but not running out. Uh, I'll also grease this grease zerk. That's the only one on the, uh, the tiller. Then I'll have a couple of U-joints to uh, grease before we go out. And from the operator seat, I wanted to remind you to put the PTO control level lever in the correct position to the rear PTO. You can see the label right there that shows that uh, rear PTO. There it is. Now, I also want to remind you that when you're hooking your attachment up, move that lever to the bottom drive right there by that arrow. And that'll allow you to turn that PTO shaft, align the two shafts up very easily, and it just takes a lot of frustration away of hooking any PTO driven uh, implement up. All right, let's look under the tiller and you're gonna see four C-shaped heat treated tines per flange. In this case, I've got nine flanges, so I've got 36 tines working for me. And I also wanted to point this out. Don't forget this doggone uh, parking stand. I've almost torn it off twice. It's the same color, and I've missed it a few times. Uh, my wife caught it there a couple times for me and saved me from tearing it off. The reason it's there is it prevents the tiller from rolling forward when you disconnect it. But I'm going to show you another way that I've come up to prevent that. I don't use that stand. Here I'm demonstrating how to adjust the skid shoes. It's pretty easy, but I recommend loosening the front bolt to my left also because in my case, the nut on the other side is welded to the tiller. It doesn't quite align perfectly with that bolt, so I need some play and some slop in that uh, skid shoe to make that work. Once you get it where you want it, in this case, I'm going to go down. That's deeper right there. I lower it all the way when I store it so it sits on those uh, skid shoes and uh, not the tines. All right, with the tiller greased and inspected, we're ready to go. The soil right in here is a lot of clay and it's very poor, so I'm gonna mix in some better soil that I brought in, and then we're gonna till that in with that uh, lesser quality soil and hopefully we'll get a good, good lawn out of this. When I shot this video, this is probably year two of a pretty significant drought here in Iowa. So, uh, fingers crossed that we can get a yard to grow in here, and that's why some of this dirt is so doggone hard and dry. The pro this project is a result of a trench I installed in video 123. I buried uh, some conduit so I could enhance my security system uh, in uh, late winter, and now it's time to get it all seated and get the yard back in here, I hope. Now, we had real good rain in April out here, so I'm optimistic that the drought is going to be reduced quite a bit, and we're going to be able to get some moisture, some ground moisture back. All right, now you notice that I have the tiller engaged already, and throughout the project, you're gonna see me backing up with the tiller running. Now I'm quite aware that the tiller can't be lifted too steep or too low without causing damage. The tiller manual recommends that you don't exceed it 25 degrees higher or lower than a level drive shaft. So when I do this, you're gonna see I just lift it out of the ground and then back up. Sometimes if I'm not comfortable with it, I just hit the off switch and turn it off and restart it. 
It's real easy to do. And I'm going to go through that in the next video on how to start this up. Remember, you always want to engage your tiller at a low RPM to minimize startup torque. And the tiller has a slip clutch. And you're supposed to go through a run-in operation prior to the initial use and after periods of long inactivity like winter here. And that's going to be a separate video. I'll show you how to do that. Once you have the uh, tiller engaged, then you're going to want to throttle up to 540 PTO speed. And that, that's right there on your dash. And uh, the tiller uh, tines I read are designed to cut more efficiently at 540 than a slower speed. As I'm going along here listening to these rocks bang against that tiller, I'm wondering if I shouldn't have taken uh, my uh, soil pulverizer or that disc out to chew that up. I'm having second thoughts, but we're in this far. Let's, let's see what happens. Those aggressive teeth on that uh, soil pulverizer and that, that would have done a terrific job for me here. But, uh, well, we're going to see. As I go along here, you're going to note that the tiller closest to the camera is up in the air sometimes. And I'm trying to adjust that tiller to reduce the slope of that bank. It's just rough in there. So I'm trying to make it real gradual down to the existing yard. Hey, it's a good time to get some shout outs in now. I first of all, want to thank uh, my new 146 subscribers. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. I think we're within 900 subscribers now of our 10,000 uh, subscriber goal. Thanks a lot, everybody. We can do it. Just subscribe and uh, trust me, I won't, I won't bug you. <laughs> and I really appreciate the recent nudge from Dennis and Diane saying, when's the next video coming out? I got kind of lazy this month. And uh, thanks for the nudge. So we got this out for you today. Hey, I got a big pile of uh, shout outs. So let me get started. Rob checked in from Diamond, Washington. Say hello. Thanks a lot. Uh, Vernon up in uh, British Columbia, Canada. He's looking for a disc harrow. I wonder how that's working out. Dave over in London, Ontario. He's halfway between Ontario and uh, Detroit. And Jay checked in from Richmond, Virginia. Cliff over in Luthersville, Georgia said hello. Hey, did you see that rock fly out of there? You may want to play that back, but probably a good reason to kind of stay away from these things as you're tilling, huh? Hey, uh, Michael's a three-year subscriber over in Astoria, Illinois. Fred is in Valparaiso, Indiana. Kimster, 27, in Water Waterford, Virginia, said they really enjoy the uh, backhoe projects. Thanks a lot. Jim, Wrightsville, Pennsylvania, checked in. Dwayne over in Udall, uh, Missouri. And uh, Lush in La Jeanne Gardien, Canada. Uh, I apologize, buddy, if I mess, messed your name up. Hank over in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, checked in, said hello. Uh, Natty Deadlocks is in Hedgeville, West Virginia, one of my favorite areas. Jason said hi from Mason, Michigan. And Joette checked in from Gilbertson, Florida. Oh, and MDS, MDH over in Festus, Missouri. And one last shout out, I wanted to say hi to Matt and Silas down in Sanger, Texas. All right, I always appreciate hearing from everybody. I really appreciate when you take the time and say hello. I always get back to everybody, and it's very interesting to see where everyone's watching from. Well, there I'm asking my wife to go pick up that rock that slung out earlier. Boy, I'm glad that didn't uh, hurt it, hit anybody. Or I'm kind of nervous to take a look at the tines here when we're all done. I don't know what they're going to look like. I've really put this through some poor soil there, haven't we? You know, this tiller is designed to go six and a half inch uh, to a six and a half inch tilling depth. And I'll be happy to get two or three inches here out of the ground. Now I'm working my way over towards the existing lawn and I always like to run over that a little bit and kind of blend the, the two together. This tiller also has an offset feature, which I'm not using here, but it allows you to work close to trees, fence lines and buildings. You can manually move the hitch clevises up to seven or seven inches right or left to the gearbox and then the, the tiller will follow the tractor offset by seven inches if you run in that situation all right so we're done with that time to get my favorite uh seed and fertilizer on that i always use i know diane checked to see what kind i was using and i'll have to take a picture of that label and put it up now in this case i went ahead and rolled it in i really wanted to get some good contact with that soil 
and uh, give it the best chance uh, it has to grow with uh, the limited moisture we have. I am on a well here, so I typically do not water uh, my lawns. All right, here we are, 10 months later. I think you'll have to agree it turned out pretty nice, didn't it? Project cost about $100 for some seed, so I'm going to give the tractor a credit of $800. Now, let's go take a look at those tines. We'll clean them up here and see what kind of damage you did. And I'm very happy to report there's not much damage to them, but sure sounded like it was tilling out in a quarry, didn't it? Well, as always, I appreciate the privilege of your time. Have a great month. Be kind. Take care of yourselves, everybody. So long.